Okay, um, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, my talk about uh, how Oricon is driving engineering into a new age. It's a bit of a, a, a strange title. Forgive me, I'm a former journalist, I couldn't help myself. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I didn't really think I'd ever be presenting ideas and work at a Unity conference. Um, my name is Murray Walker. I lead a small team out of our uh, Cape Town office. Um, we've formed a in-house studio called Unsigned Studio recently, and uh, we're the sort of Africa unit of that. Um, in the Cape Town office, our journey with Unity started about three years ago um, with the emergence of uh, affordable commercial virtual reality equipment. Um, I don't know about you, but the first time I tried virtual reality, I had a talk, talk louder. Sorry, let me know if you need me to talk louder. Um, so when aff affordable virtual reality equipment became available, uh, this is when we started to take it seriously. And I don't know about you, but when, we, when you tried it for the first time, you got this real sense of all these possibilities that virtual reality uh, can bring to us, and it's those possibilities that drove uh, the company to take the use of game engines seriously. Um, here's a quick introduction to some of our work. Uh, I'll, I'll touch on some of what you see in this uh, film sh during my talk. Um, so we approach engineering through this paradigm of, of Unity as an engineering engine. Um, you can use Unity's tools to illustrate a whole range of engineering problems, and this is how we, we think about how to use Unity. Uh, it has a physics engine, you can use shaders, you can use particle systems, and uh, all to illustrate specific engineering issues. We see Unity becoming the central platform uh, where all uh, design review uh, is, takes place and you can feed in on information from all the traditional engineering tools uh, like your design software, just information, uh, Excel databases. Um, it's how we're trying to do engineering now and we believe it's how all engineering will be done in the future. So uh, there's a couple of things we realized really quickly. Um, what th some low-hanging fruit that we could really get some quick wins on when we started. Um, and those are design review and client engagement. Uh, both of these have brought immense value to both us, uh, our design teams, as well as our clients. And I'll uh, talk through each of these now. So if, from a design review perspective, um, we see that it's allowing our designers to approach problems in uh, novel ways, they can be a little bit braver in the way that they design because they can test assumptions by jumping into, uh, into a one-to-one -one model in VR and then quickly discard what they think uh, is useless and expand on what they think is, is, is useful. Um, this is also really cheap to do. You don't have to uh, go and 
like build physical models of stuff to to find out that your uh, the space where you need a truck to to uh, to come in is too small. You can just walk around in VR. Um, we're not figuring these things out at the construction stage anymore. And then the other really useful thing we found is that uh, if we have new employees that need to jump onto an existing project, uh, we immediately put them into VR and someone who knows the project really well walks them through it, explains uh, the constraints, the challenges, and they get, uh, they get up to speed much, much quicker. From a client engagement point of view, um, often we'll engage with uh, groups or a client that has a group of people within it that is non-technical and they really struggle to take a 2D drawing and make a coherent 3D picture in their heads. And what this, what this uh, creates is like misunderstanding when you're trying to talk about uh, problems on a particular project. So if we if throw them into a VR model to get them to walk around, everybody's speaking to the exact same uh, 3D model, the exact same picture, and it, it does away with individual interpretations, which means you have less misunderstanding and, and far better outcomes. Um, there's an added bonus here too, uh, which some of you might cringe at, but clients often want to get more involved once they've been through this. Uh, because they understand the constraints better, they can often offer better, solu better solutions because ultimately they know their problems best. So we also started thinking about how a model can exist for a longer time. Um, we didn't want a model just to be useful for design review or just for client engagement. We wanted it to, to exist throughout both, just a, both a project and, and after a project is completed. So this is kind of how we're thinking about the utility of a model. Um, it starts with design review. That can be really basic, uh, not, not many bells and whistles. Then you can uh, step it up a, bar, a bit when you go meet clients, make it look a bit, a bit prettier. And then if you have to go consult the public, you can add additional information into that, uh, stuff that might be useful to the public. If it's a type of project that uh, is like a factory or a, a plant or something where there needs to be operations uh, done on it, you can build in those operator training uh, me mechanisms so that while it's busy, busy being built, you can familiarize your, your, your tr operators. And then once it's built, reflect the as-built information into that model. Um, and then finally, feed in asset data uh, and, and sensor information if it's available into a digital twin that will hopefully last as long as the plant does. Everyone can hear me okay? Am I mumbling a bit? <laughs> okay, so I want to return to this uh, concept of an engineering engine and what we really mean by it. So ultimately, Unity is a world-building machine uh, and engineers build the world around us. So it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, a more obvious uh, marriage than it might seem at first. So here's a, a, a video from a former colleague. Uh, it's a rebar laying sequence and you can use it, this just is a, a brief illustration, but you can use it to, to inspect for clashes in your rebar and check for your bend schedules. So um, nothing, nothing that we're doing can't be done in more traditional uh, engineering packages, but the advantage here with Unity is the interface. Uh, you can have multiple different interfaces and you can address designs in a more natural way, we think. Uh, you can build custom tools around how you want to engage with the information and of course you can make stuff look really good. And you can do, do all of that in one place. Okay, so uh, just some examples of how we're using it in, to solve some engineering issues. Uh, this one's a really simple one and was uh, one of the, our early sort of um, successes, but it basically revolved around uh, a new pedestrian extension to a bridge, and they wanted to put road markings down on the area where the, where the pedestrians would walk, but they wanted to see what those markings would look like to a car traveling 60 kilometers an hour along that. They were worried they were gonna get blurry. And so um, what we did was we just laid the road markings out in their, in their standard uh, layout and then 
uh, put someone in a VR headset, sent them along the road at 60 kilometers an hour, sitting down, obviously. Um, and you can see the difference there. From, let me maybe play that again. It got blurry, and then you spread them out, and it's a bit better. So this was a this is a quick win that we got, uh, and it meant that uh, they used I think a third less paint, which isn't mass massive, but it also meant that we knew that drivers weren't going to uh, misinterpret what those line markings meant. So uh, another th another thing we're doing is we have a, a workflow from AutoCAD into Unity that's placing solar tables. Um, it includes taking information about the topology of the site and uh, rotating the tables so that they conform to that topology. And we've got this workflow down to about 30 minutes. I mean, obviously, the AutoCAD side uh, takes time, but once there's a prelim design, we can quickly put that into Unity and turn it into a full 3D model. So the time usually is in the coordinate conversion from the world space that the AutoCAD is working in into Unity space. And once you have this in, you can explore it. You can see if your or tables are too close together. Um, and it really helps our designers understand the constraints that they have to work under, especially if it's uh, a site in another country that they, they haven't visited. So obviously, we can test shading issues here. We can test what time of day uh, tables will shade each other. And then you can quickly just get an intuitive sense, oh, maybe we need to uh, put them a little bit further apart. Uh, with a directional light or the sun, we can uh, set it to the site's position in the world. So you can test the differences between the sun, sunlight in the summer versus the winter. Um, and we're also, we're also using this method on wind farms so to, to dynamically place turbines, uh, test things like shadow flicker, which is a huge issue, uh, and, and a number of other things. Uh, so let me just show you a quick demo of how this stuff is placed. Um, sorry, give me a sec. So we have a, um, a editor tool here, and we're placing some prefabs, um, and then giving them parents so they'll just be uh, neatly put into the to the hierarchy. Uh, there's a CSV table of coordinates and rotations, and then like a model identifier, so we know which one to place. In this case, there's two different table lengths, 60 meters and 90 meters. Um, we have some functionality for other things like wind turbines, so you can choose there what you want, and then you just place. Takes a couple seconds. And you have your entire wind farm, I mean, uh, solar farm, and you can jump into VR, explore it. Um, Get a sense for if you have if you've designed something wrong, like the topology is you're going over a stream or something like that. All right. So uh, another project. We've done and this involves uh, how the trucks that deliver turbines and blades to, to site, how they're going to uh, maneuver on the roads that we design on that wind farm. Uh, these trucks are very long. These days they're like well over 120 meters long. Um, and obviously that, that sets up some pretty uh, crazy constraints for the road designers. Uh, these trucks have independent rear steering, so um, they can get around cor like sharper corners a little bit easier. Um, but this this also means that they have constraints around like how they're going to turn around once they've dropped off a, a, a blade and whether they can get up a, a, a particular incline because they're so long they might they run the risk of beaching themselves if your incline is too sharp. Um, so in this picture you can actually see uh, it, it's off the ground now, but the back wheels are have sort of lifted off because it the the trailer hit the ground 
and it, uh, it sort of jackknifed itself. So we had to go back and, uh, and iron out that, that road design a bit. Um, we've also been using this to test and plan for the delivery of components to a hard stand. Um, you know, this, when, the, um, when the crane comes along that has to pick up and, and assemble a turbine, uh, it needs things in a particular order. And so we're testing those things just to make uh, everything more, much more efficient on site. And this has been really valuable to our clients and contractors. Um, so this is a, d a really uh, cheap and dirty demonstration of our workflow from traffic simulation software Vism into Unity. Um, it's basically all just running animations and we use this in-house, that's why we didn't uh, uh, spend too much time printing it up. But it really helps to get a sense for how traffic will behave in a new intersection. You can test uh, visibility of signage. These are just all animations, so you can put someone in inside a car and they can test visibility of signage as they get to an intersection. And then you can also test what it's going to be like for a pedestrian. Can they see cars coming around a particular corner? Uh, all that type of thing. And it's proved pretty useful for us too. So if any of you were at uh, my colleague Michael's talk earlier today, he would have introduced you to SiteLab. Uh, it was developed by Michael and his team in Brisbane. And this allows us to produce a range of outputs, not just virtual reality like most of the stuff I've shown you is about. Um, you can, we can develop mobile apps, flat apps for, for desktop. Uh, all with a common U UI and identity and uh, you know, the flexibility that's afforded to us by Unity that this framework sits on top of uh, means we can tailor make stuff for clients' needs. Not everyone has a VR headset, for instance, so sometimes it needs to be on a tablet or a computer. So another interesting space uh, we're playing in is, is in training. Uh, in this case, we built a training module for a client. They wanted to train their train or their electrical uh, electrician trainees on high voltage substations. Uh, if anyone knows anything about electricity, high voltage is extremely dangerous. Um, so they, they want to limit the amount of time that they expose uh, trainees to, to live uh, substations. And so this is a, a switching exercise. You need to switch the substation off. Um, I'll sort of let it play and talk over it. So the trainee has to uh, follow precise procedures. They have to do visual inspections, they have to communicate with control centers, uh, they have to turn levers. And the intention is to, to eventually recreate all their existing substations so that trainees can learn and develop memories of those substations and how they work, where to find things, uh, all before they actually step foot on site. Um, we've also done an in-house uh, health and safety training game. You have to walk around sites uh, at construction sites and identify potential hazards. Um, we, this is playable on desktop and in VR. So we don't just make interactive tools using Unity. Uh, we make short explainer films too. Um, this is a video showing a new design of a, of a road. Uh, from It was a single lane uh, that had some stop streets and it became a we're going to turn it into a dual carriageway uh, with circles. And it obviously has implications for the public the people who live around there, how they're going to get in and out of their houses. The central lane means that they 
can only turn one way out of their driveway now. So this is just showing uh, people how that's going to work. Sorry, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going a bit quicker. Um, so the previous film and this film, uh, or this short clip, both made in Unity a while ago. Uh, we're really excited about all Unity's new filmmaking tools that have come out over the last while. Um, and these are just really useful for to give to clients as a bit of a value add that they can use in presentations. Uh, it's stuff that they weren't expecting, but they really appreciate when you give it to them. Uh, this video is not made using Unity, um, but it's a great example of something that's really complex, like a multi-year pro infrastructure project, uh, billions of, of RAND in our case. Uh, and it's just, we just made it really simple for the people infected by these, or in the communities that are affected uh, by these upgrades and, and bureaucrats who are ultimately going to fund this to understand a little bit better about where the money's going. So a couple of surprises um, that we've come up uh, or that we've discovered over our uh, journey is that one thing we've discovered is that using this, uh, especially VR, when clients need to go secure funding for a particular project, extremely powerful. Uh, instead of people having to write, read 500 page reports, you can put them into this VR model and they walk around it and they get a sense of where their money is going to be spent. Uh, and we, the feedback we've had from our clients who've gone seeking funding has been really phenomenal. They just like want more of it and more of it. Um, uh, this is a, another thing that we didn't really consider. Uh, you saw some clips in the original in the showreel earlier, um, but we should use this ourselves uh, for marketing and for engagement with clients. And so this is something that we built uh, that basically looks at some out-of-the-box solutions for problems facing the city of Cape Town uh, f over the next 30 years or so, things like climate change, uh, sea level rise, el electricity, power, those types of things. Um, and we use this in a conference to, to engage with client, clients, ask them, this, at the end of this experience, it, it pops up with a question, and once they take the headset off, you can engage them on that question. It's worked really, really nicely. Um, okay, so some headaches uh, that we've experienced, and you'll no doubt experience yourselves. Um, people ask us why we are in an engineering company. Uh, we're a team of, of three artists and developers, and they don't quite understand why we're there and what we can do for them. So it's a constant process of, of educating them and showing them examples of work and how it's been useful. Um, it's always tricky you know, when you're trying to change ways that people are going to work, uh, no matter the organization or the, or the field you're in, um, but it's necessary and it's just something you're going to come up against. Uh, the next one is file compatibility. Uh, this has been a, a major challenge for us um, because there's so many different design packages and they all have different, like, tweaks to them that, uh, that you need to take into account when, you've, when you're getting models out of them. Uh, it means slightly different workflows for each, each design package. Things like Reflect, that's coming soon, uh, and companies like Pixies make this a lot easier, but then you still will have some frustrations. Uh, and then lastly is performance. Uh, super detailed models come to us often. The engineers want to see those details, uh, and you have to deal with thousands and thousands of objects in a scene, especially in VR, that gets pretty crazy. Okay, so lastly, uh, we're pretty excited about data visualization. Uh, using Unity to show complex data uh, um, is really interesting to us, something we want to do uh, more of. Uh, this is basically taking uh, the city of Cape Town's road network, uh, giving it a yearly budget, and then extrapolating what the condition of that road network is going to be like over the next 10 years, uh, given a yearly spend. Um, so I'll just play that again. You can see as you drag through the, through the timer, uh, the conditions change according to color. This is still really rough. It doesn't look great, but it's our first attempt, and we're, and we're hoping to polish it up, and we're really excited about it. So lastly, uh, I know I'm out of time. Uh, it all comes down to understanding. If uh, you have really complex, expensive projects that you have to deal with, 
uh, making sure that everybody who's involved in that project understands exactly what's going on. We'll make sure that everything runs a, bit, a lot smoother and uh, you ultimately will save money. So thank you so much for coming. I hope you got something useful out of this. Uh, if you are using visualization, I'd love to hear about how you're using it. Uh, and if you have any questions, please come and talk to me after I'm out of time. Thank you. <laughs>